Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a special soap to honor my father who's passed away about 30 years now but he was a college professor, a PhD in chemistry to be specific and I want to call this bar the professor. He used to be a pipe smoker and um, it's a very nostalgic, you know, professory. He was just the quintessential college professor, if you can imagine what that looks like. Suspenders and everything, the whole nine yards. So the fragrance that I'm going to be using is Bay Leaf and Tobacco from Wholesale Supply Plus and it's a really good smell. Um, it's actually brighter than I thought. It's not smoky at all. It would be like the tobacco leaf. Uh, it's kind of green smelling, but I like it. I thought for the theme I'm having today is gonna go well. The liquid portion that I'm gonna use today is liquid whey, organic raw whey, and it's whey, <laughs> W-H-E-Y, that I have saved off of when I make homemade um, like yogurt and things like that, any cultured things, you strain off the liquid portion. Well, that is just like liquid gold. It's full of nutrients, it's great to, you know, eat, but it's also really good on your skin. I pulled up just a few bullet notes of why whey, why whey <laughs> would be good on your skin. Um, it's, it's moisturizing, it's got a toning effect, uh, it's got a cleansing effect, it's supposed to help with acne, it's a little bit antimicrobial, um, it's supposed to be a lightening agent. I don't know. That would probably not be a rinse off product if you used it as a toner for the lightening, but it's supposed to be very good for the elasticity of your skin. Um, it's got all those lactic acids, which are wonderful on your skin. So, and there's more, but whey is going to be the liquid portion for our lye solution. And I'll show you how I do that when I get there. I treat it the same way that I do a milk. So just add the lye very slow and start with a really cold, like a slushy type. Um, I'll have the whey in a frozen state. So the colors that I want to use in my professor bar are going to be um, this fire cider. I want to do a three color swirl. So fire cider will be one. I'm going to use this cappuccino uh, mica from Brambleberry. I thought those look good together. And then to represent like the um, so it's the tobacco, what is this? Sorry, bay leaf and tobacco. So for the bay leaf, I wanna use this matte woodland green pigment from Wholesale Supply Plus. So I thought these colors all together would just make a really sort of um, masculine, pretty swirly. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on top yet, probably just a scoop top or something. But uh, anyway, I just want this bar to be really beautiful, very masculine, very, collegiate professor-ish <laughs> to represent my dad, who I love very much. Um, and I'll tell you more about that later on as we're making soap. So I'm gonna get everything pulled together, get my whey prepped and ready to go, get my hair pulled back, safety gear on, and let's come back and make some professor-ish soap. I've got my liquid whey here um, and it was frozen and I threw it in the fridge so it's kind of a slushy mixture right now so I'm going to weigh this out and then if I need to top it off I'll use my distilled water to just bring it up to the proper liquid amount. This stuff is liquid gold. It's so good. Just top it off with a couple of ounces of water to get it up to weight and then um, I'm going to uh, put my tablespoon of sugar in the liquids here and get it dissolved put my little cotton ball size of tussa silk and then I will add my lye crystals to this very slowly and stir it. all right so here's my sugar and I'm just gonna Stir this until I can't feel any granules because it's a little bit cloudy because of the whey, so I can't really see down in there, but you know, you can feel if there's any grit left. I want that sugar to be good and dissolved before we put the lye in there because it will not melt. It's funny, I wish my chemistry professor father was here to talk to me about this. I'm not sure what the reaction is, but um, the lye water, it's very hard to dissolve sugar in that. And I'm sure there's something going on in there. If, if any of you out there are chemists and you, you know why that is, I'd be very curious to hear why the sugar won't melt after the lye is added. 
These are, this is one of the homeschool questions I would ask my kids if they were still at home. Let's go figure that out. But they're not here, and I'm being lazy today, so I'm just going to talk to you all about it. Anyway, there we go. I don't feel any more grit, so time to get my silk in there, and then we'll pour the lye in slowly. Right, I just finished getting the last bit of the lye in there, and I wanted to show you that dark golden color that it turns kind of like milk can go um, just because it gets very hot and a lot of the lactic acid and milk sugars are in there along with the sugar so that got very warm um, i am going to go ice bath this now and i will probably add a little bit of titanium dioxide in there because it is such a it's a lovely color but i want my color swirls to stand out so i'm going to put a little td in here and continue mixing it and throw it in the ice bath All right, I'm ready to move forward. And so what we've got going on in here are my oils and butters all melted. It's got kale and clay, two tablespoons of kale and two tablespoons of colloidal oats uh, and the fragrance. That's what's going on in here. Over here, we have our wonderful whey um, lye solution that I did put a teaspoon of titanium dioxide in here and it's still this gorgeous caramel color. So I'm glad I did put a little TD in there because I want my color swirls to stand out. Um, I have a tablespoon of cane sugar before we added the lye. Uh, it's got tuss of silk fibers and sodium lactate. That's what's going on in here. And I'm going to go ahead and hand stir this in, and then we'll split off and stick blend the colors as needed. And because of the sugar that I added and the natural... Um, the lactic acid and milk sugars in the way. I am not going to insulate my mold. I'll just put the lid on. It's a nice wood lid and just let it sit like that overnight. I'm not going to insulate this and I will be checking it to make sure that it doesn't overheat. Um, if it starts to look like it's cracking on top at any point, I will throw it in the refrigerator. Um, but I do like my soaps to go through gel phase. That's just how I prefer it. So you know, I want to get gel without overheating. <laughs> so there's kind of a delicate balance there. So Professor Barr is thinking about my dad. Um, oh, one funny thing. So math is not my strong suit. I was super blessed homeschooling my children that my husband is really great at math. And so um, between the internet and my husband, and we would figure everything out. We didn't come up against a roadblock that we couldn't overcome, but it's not my strong suit. So I remember like in junior high, I would go to my father with like an, a basic algebra question for help. And I would walk out of his office just dumbfounded with like three pages of quantum physics. He was so smart that it literally, he couldn't bring it down to my level. <laughs> He just, the fact that I didn't get the X times Y equals N sort of thing, he just, his brain just couldn't com compute that I didn't get it. So it was funny. We, I mean, and he was good natured about it, but I just thought that was funny. Another funny fact is uh, my sister and her husband are veterinarians and they met in vet school. And before you go to vet school, you have to have a bachelor's degree in a science-based um, subject. And so her husband was a chemistry major for his bachelor's degree, and then he went on to vet school. And they met there. Well, I met my husband at a pizza parlor. <laughs> he was the delivery guy and trained me, and he worked on campus um, in the evenings after college. He is a chemistry major, and we just thought that was hilarious. My dad loved our husbands. Um, it just thought it was really funny that my sister and I both ended up marrying people with chemistry degrees. I just thought that was awesome. So anyway, and then my husband went on to become a Marine Corps officer and pilot, which had nothing to do with a chemistry degree. But <laughs> and, and then my sister and her husband went on to use their chemistry and become veterinarians. <laughs> So, and she's, a, her and her husband are fantastic veterinarians. That's a whole other subject. But let's get these colors blended in. It's hard for me to talk and stay on topic of what I'm doing and not like go off on a tangent. All right, that green is gorgeous. Look at that. So what I'm gonna do is I don't know what to call this. Not a, not a wood grain pour, not really a Clyde slide. I'm going to go to the brown next. 
Um, but I'm going to pour these back into the bucket in one in one spot. I'll show you when we get there, and then sort of go back and forth in the mold. I have it in my mind. I didn't want this to be swirly because I'm doing a masculine soap here, so I wanted more of a stripey swirl. All right, it's been about 24 hours, and let's get our professor out of the mold here. The colors are more muted than I thought today, but I hope I hope they come out really cool and, you know, masculine. I was surprised to see how um, muted they were, though. They're not vibrant, but I kind of like it. So a few more things about my dad. Let me see. So obviously he was a brilliant chemist and uh, very smart that way. Um, he was also a musician. He played the French horn and a couple other instruments. And he was an opera singer. And he actually sang on stage with Beverly Sills, who was a very famous opera singer back in, I think, the you know, 70s, 80s time era. Um, and he would do some musicals and local theater. So, and the university had a really neat theater. And um, so anyway, he was a multifaceted man. Ooh, that's cool this direction. I can't wait to cut these bars and see what it looks like going the other way. I can't wait to get in these and see what that swirl's doing in here. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool and masculine and I don't know if it's professory, but I'm going to say it is just because that's what these are. So this is my little quarter sized piece and I put four of those in a bundle. Let's get in here and see what we got. Oh, I'm loving it. It's kind of cool on this corner there too. These are great, and they still they smell really good. They're kind of fresh and green smelling. Almost, my husband said it smelled like fall to him. Fall leaves, this uh, bay leaf and tobacco, but it's wonderful. All right, ooh, these are groovy, kind of wavy. 
not groovy, <laughs> college professor -y. I don't know. Do they look like chemistry waves, like a chemical reaction? I don't know. Kind of cracks me up how to translate that into a soap. But I think you all got my point. The point is my dad is an amazing individual. I miss him greatly. Oh, I will tell you a quick story. So this is probably in the um, mid 80s. I graduated high school in 84, got married in 85. Yes, I was a young girl, been married 35 years. But um, anyway, in the 80s, and he had <laughs> a word processor. Some of you young people don't even know what that is. It was a dinosaur of a computer. There was no internet when I was in high school, none whatsoever. MTV was new um, and it played music back then. And my brother and I were looking at my dad's new word processor and he was so excited about it. And he said, you know, someday we're gonna be able to talk to each other on these. And my brother and I just belly laughed. We thought he was like out and we're like, come on for real so funny anyway i wish my dad could be here today to see the internet i think he would have been so tickled he had a vision before his time for what was going to happen with all that and technology i think he would have loved soap making it would have cracked him up that i got into a science-based hobby and turned into a business i think that he would have loved that so um i wish he was here to see all that it's pretty awesome to think back though Technology has just been on the fast track. My husband deployed overseas in the Marine Corps, his squadron did, and um, he was actually overseas when my father passed away, and I was pregnant with our first child, my oldest daughter, um, and I delivered her while he was overseas, but there was no email. It was snail mail, and he was actually on a very small island um, when I went into labor and there was one telephone on the island that he was on in the um, in the air tower <laughs> It's a very small island off the coast of Japan and um, Yeah, it was hard getting a hold of him when I went into labor. So good times There are you know along with technology. There's a lot of you know craziness and bad stuff out there I would say really be careful how much you let your kids Have access, but there's some good stuff too <laughs> like I love being able to chat with my grandbabies in Texas and, um, you know, the good with the bad. But my dad was a man before his time. He saw it coming and we laughed at him. So dad, I apologize for laughing. You were right. So I figured I'd just talk about my dad a little while I clean up my soaps here and get them ready for stamping. Uh, so let's see, where can I start? So he's obviously a PhD in chemistry. Um, he was head of the chemistry department in the university of the hometown where I grew up in Superior, Wisconsin. And uh, let's see, what else about him? Oh my goodness, there's so many funny stories. Okay, so when I was eight years old, my parents moved from town uh, to the country. They bought 40 acres out in the deep woods in Wisconsin. Let me tell you, the mosquitoes there are like buzzards. They're so huge, but that's a whole other story. So along with our country living, uh, we had a big barn and with that comes mice in the country. And so we got some barn cats and um, one of our Cats had a litter of kittens, and uh, we thought we found them all, and my father was out in the barn, and he heard this little mewling, and he found this little black and white tuxedo kitty, and that was his kitty, so he named it Charles. Well, Charles grew up to go on and have many, many more successful litters for our barn. <laughs> so Charles was not a boy, he was a girl, and uh, was a very fruitful kitty. Um, but we were responsible cat owners as my sister uh, got her veterinarian degree. She came and fixed and spayed and neutered all the kitties. So we didn't propagate the cat population of Wisconsin too much, but 
Dad and his kitty Charles were so cute. And he loved country living. He would go out and cord wood. We got a Fisher wood stove and uh, he loved that Fisher wood stove. Boy, he didn't want anybody messing with it. He had the dials on the front of it just so. And he would go out and cord wood and come in looking like the abominable snowman. He had this red uh, snowmobile suit and he had a beard. And it would literally would have icicles hanging off of his beard when he'd come in from chopping wood. So that was always fun to see. <laughs> Oh, what else did my parents? Uh, okay, so when we lived in town when I was little, they had bridge club with the other university professors from different um, departments. And so they would have the university professors over for bridge club, and it was such a big deal. And my mom and dad would set um, card tables around the whole living room and dining room area so we could fit multiple tables for bridge club. And my mom would buy these little special candies, bridge mix, like chocolate covered peanuts and chocolate covered raisins, which as a child, I just thought that was the biggest travesty. Chocolate covered raisin was like, who in the world? Now that I'm a grown up, I can appreciate them. But as a kid, I'm like, why would you choose a raisin over a peanut? <laughs> That's my thinking. Anyway, so she would have bridge mix and it was just this very kind of a, a big deal when it was bridge night for my parents. And that's actually a very intelligent game. I tried to learn bridge as a young military wife. They had uh, bridge lessons and it's interesting, but man, you need to keep your head in the game. It is not for the faint of heart. I preferred like more the cheater, like spades or hearts. That was kind of a mock bridge without being quite so complicated. <laughs> but anyway, those are just some fun stories about my upbringing and, um, my father was just a really special guy. He absolutely loved my husband. The first time I brought him home to meet the parents, uh, I was living in Minneapolis and he was going to the university there. And uh, he worked in Dinky Town at this pizza parlor and I got a job there. He trained me in. I fell in love with my husband in about 30 seconds. <laughs> Knew he was the guy for me. Uh, took, took me a while to convince him. But anyway, I brought him home and my mom and dad loved him. Was kind of a troublemaker in high school and so I think they would have kicked me curbside and adopted him that's how much they loved him but my dad and him talked chemistry and he invited my husband to come and sit on a couple classes and hang out and they did all that and so anyway it was like love at first sight for my parents also <laughs> when I brought my husband home which is funny. And then my sister and I ended up getting married about six months apart from each other to our chemistry major husbands, which is just so ironic, I think. So one of the things my dad liked to do in his free time when he wasn't preoccupied with being a professor, because that was very detailed, setting up his labs and correcting papers and getting ready for lectures and all that, but he liked to read uh, these dime store novels, uh, Louis L'Amour, I think they were Westerns, there was a whole series, and he would just, that relaxed him to just read these penny novels, and he enjoyed that very much. Um, he also just loved listening to music, and this is old school now, we're talking 80s, we had turntable, stereo system, if you jumped in the house too hard, you'd skip the needle on the record, that was very frustrating. <laughs> but he was a big discerner of music. Um, he loved comedy on albums, and he loved Gilbert and Sullivan musicals. We would all sing along to that. Um, I was the only one of my siblings. I have two brothers and a sister, and they were all in theater, like my father. And I was the only one not in theater, but I really enjoyed the shows that would go on in the house. <laughs> so um, yeah, my dad was an appreciator of good music. I'm all cleaned up here. I'm going to get these ready to stamp. I'm probably not going to talk while I stamp because that's loud. So anyway, enjoy the professor and we'll see you next time.